today, Wednesday, March the 24th, we celebrate the feast of the martyred Archbishop of San Salvador, Oscar Arnolfo Romero. This is the 41st anniversary on his death of the killing of the El Salvador Archbishop, a church leader who has been recognized internationally as a champion of human rights. Oscar was born August the 15th, 1917, in Ciudad Barrios in San Miguel, Department of El Salvador. Initially trained at home in his studies and by his father in carpentry, he went on to prepare for the priesthood, first by studies in San Miguel and then later in Rome. Initially, he was assigned to priestly duties in his country and was ordained a bishop. And then in 1977, was named leader of the archdiocese in his nation's capital city. Initially, his conservative background had made it unlikely that he would go on to be a voice for the voiceless, would be denounced by fellow bishops, earn the hatred of the rich and powerful, and as Robert Ellsberg writes, quote, generate such enmity that he would be targeted for assassination. The first bishop slain at the altar since Thomas a Becket in the 12th century, unquote. What changed in him was the killing of his Jesuit priest friend, Rutilio Grande, on March the 12th, 1977, a result of Father Rutilio's outspoken commitment to social justice. Ellsberg observed that this resulted in a profound transformation in Romero as a new level in violence at the same time was overtaking the country. Quote, from a once timid and conventional cleric, there emerged a fearless and outspoken champion of justice. His weekly sermons broadcast by radio throughout the country featured an inventory of the week's violations of human rights, unquote, which earned for him the public role as a conscience of the nation, as well as the bitter enmity of the country's oligarchy. Romero spoke increasingly of the need for the church to be united in its option for the poor, its denunciation of injustice and repression its promotion of human dignity, its prophetic call for new social order, and its proclamation of Christ's presence in the life of the poor in their struggle for justice. His homilies were listened to throughout Latin America. They became an important source of news and inspiration. As an example, he declared, quote, what starts conflicts and persecutions, what marks the genuine church, is when the word, burning like the word of the prophets, proclaims God's wonders to be believed and venerated and accuses of sin those who oppose God's reign so that they may tear that sin out of their hearts, out of their societies, out of their laws, out of the structures that oppress, that imprison, that violates the rights of God and of humanity." Unquote. In this vein, Romero preached, this is the mission entrusted to the church, a hard mission, to uproot sins from history, to uproot sins from the political order, to uproot sins from the economy, to uproot, uproot sins wherever they are. From a homily in January of 1978. A year later, Romero declared, I am a man, frail and limited, 
and I do not know what is happening, but I do know that God knows, and he knew something of the cost. In April of 1979, he went on, the church celebrates its liturgy and preaches its word only for this, to save from sin, to slave from, save from slaveries, to overthrow idolatries, to proclaim the one God who loves us. That will be the church's difficult mission, and it knows that in fulfilling that mission, which earned for Christ a cross and humiliations, it will have to be ready also not to betray that mission, that message, and if necessary, to suffer martyrdom like him. Suffer the cross, humiliation, and persecution. Further, in early 1980, he stated, we wish to shake our baptized people out of habits that, make, that threaten to make them practically baptized pagans, idolaters of their money and power. What sort of baptized pers personas are these? Those who want to bear the mark of the Spirit and the fire that Christ baptizes with must take the risk of renouncing everything and seeking only God's reign and God's justice. Two months later, on Sunday, March the 23rd, the Feast of St. Terebius, patron of Latin American bishops, Romero gave what many considered to have been his most famous homily to a packed congregation. He called upon Salvadoran soldiers to disobey unjust orders to kill their own brothers and sisters. The following day, at a mass in the chapel of the cancer hospital where he lived, as Romero prepared the gifts of bread and wine for the offertory, he was assassinated at the altar. Subsequently, another Latin American advocate of the poor, Father Jan Sobrino, noted that Romero prophet to a martyred nation had become the preeminent example of Christian martyrdom of, contem of contemporary history. Quote, Sobrino wrote, by his word and example, he introduced a spirit into the reality and the struggle of the Salvadoran people. By his spirit, he made the people more firmly committed to liberation, more politically effective, and more awake to rejecting political action that did not take the good of the poor majority with absolute seriousness. Allegedly, a death squad led by Major Roberto de Basson was thought responsible for Romero's death. But the horror did not stop there. At the funeral mass days later, on March 30th, a quarter of a million, including our own Archbishop here in Washington at the time, James Hickey, turned out for the funeral, marking the largest demonstration in El Salvador and perhaps in the history of Latin America. However, shooting quickly followed. Several were killed as the crowd fled for safety. In 2015, Romero was beatified in a special ceremony in San Salvador. And then a few years later, on October the 14th, 2018, he was canonized at St. Peter's Square by Pope Francis. And his remains lie in the Cathedral of San Salvador. Archbishop Romero's memory continues worldwide. The challenges in Central America continue. But his example continues to give hope and witness as we pray to this brave saint, Monsignor Romero, ruega por nosotros. Saint Oscar, pray for us. <laughs>